What are horror video games if not intense, nerve-shredding experiences where you are constantly on your toes wondering what you might encounter next? And since we so often have the terrifying odds stacked against us, it follows there are some severe punishments for simple mistakes, whether taking too long to complete a task, trying to rush to the end, behaving selfishly, or just simply allowing dang curiosity to get the better of us. We know what happened to the cat, goddammit! Smart developers are able to exploit this risk-reward aspect to keep players in a state of high tension, never sure where safety lies. Though there are certainly times where it might feel a bit cheap or even unfair. And so, whether savagely gory or simply devastatingly cruel, these 10 horror game punishments all left us aghast at the harsh brutality of it all, with unforgiving developers inflicting insane fates upon those who didn't do the air quotes right thing. On occasion, it was a punishment most definitely deserved, but for the most part, these games gave players one hell of a raw deal. I am the Taskmaster, Ash from What Culture Gaming, and these are the 10 most brutal punishments in horror video games. 10. James dies by suicide if you keep your health low. Silent Hill 2. The majority of the Silent Hill games feature a number of possible endings depending on the player's actions throughout, and typically you're not made aware of these conditions before starting. As a result, your first experience with each game is likely to end badly, and surely no more harshly than in the brilliant Silent Hill 2. Perhaps the most common outcome for first-time players is the in-water ending, where protagonist James ends up dying by suicide by driving his car into a lake. The primary factor for achieving this ending is allowing your health to continually remain low for extended periods before healing. According to the game's internal scoring system, doing so indicates that you don't care about your life and so, when it's all said and done, James consequently kills himself. Health management is an important skill in any game, for sure. But doesn't this seem just a tad… much, really? 9. Rebecca dies if you don't rescue her fast enough. Resident Evil In both the original Resident Evil and its brilliant remake, players who don't move swiftly enough to save Rebecca Chambers from the clutches of the Alpha Hunter will ultimately end up staring at her mutilated remains. At one point in the game, you'll hear Rebecca scream from afar and need to track her down. But if you spend more than 10 minutes doing so, it will sadly be too late for her. In the original, you'd have to dispatch the Alpha Hunter up and then find Rebecca's decapitated corpse in the corner of the room. But in the remake, you get treated to a nauseatingly graphic cutscene in which the Hunter slashes Rebecca's throat, spraying her blood all over the room. Granted, reaching Rebecca in time takes literally a minute, but even so, that is a pretty harsh punishment for just lollygagging. 8. Hoarding money gets you crushed to death. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl Survival horror FPS Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is a famously challenging game and one which really makes players fight for a happy ending. The overwhelming majority of players will end up with one of the game's five false endings, which are activated if they discover the mysterious Wish Granter device within Chernobyl's sarcophagus. Though several of the Wish Granter endings lead to positive-ish outcomes for the protagonist, the greed ending is a feat of straight-up trolling. Basically, players who have more than 50,000 rubles in their possession will be forced to watch as Strelok asks the Wish Granter for enormous riches. At this point, money rains down from the sky, which definitely doesn't seem so bad, but it does bring down the ceiling with it, which promptly crushes Strelok to death. Yes, actually, that, that is quite bad. Considering how easy it is to hoard money in Stalker and how looting is highly encouraged given the barrenness of the game's world, many players were understandably pissed off that they met such a seemingly undeserved fate. 7. Trying to flee results in death by scissors. Clock Tower Clock Tower is one of the most influential survival horror games ever made, and its meticulous design carries through to its nine possible endings determined by the player's actions throughout. Ironically, players who actually make the smartest and most believable choice end up being mischievously rewarded with the worst ending the game has to offer. After protagonist Jennifer sees one of her friends killed by the murderous scissor man, she finds a car in the mansion's garage along with a key. Though the game's design implores the player to continue exploring the mansion, those adamant to escape using the car will indeed be able to start it and drive away after a few prompts. The end credits roll and Jennifer appears to make a successful escape but a post credit scene reveals that Scissor Man is hiding in the back seat, with the implication being that he ends up killing Jennifer. And that is what you get for doing what any rational human being actually would in this sort of situation. 6. You are lied to about permadeath. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice 
Permadeath is one of the most stressful video game punishments there is, and in the brilliant Hellblade, Sinua's sacrifice, upon entering their first death, the player is informed that each subsequent death will cause Sinua's rot to further consume her. The implication is that with enough deaths, the rot will envelop Sinua completely and give players a permadeath game over, deleting their save and forcing them to start again. This naturally created an added air of tension in the early days following the game's release, with players anxious that an honest mistake could result in them losing hours of progress. But as it turned out, this was nothing more than a cheeky bluff from Ninja Theory, and after a certain point, the rot never actually progresses any further no matter how often you die. It was a clever bait and switch for sure, and for those who played the game upon launch in particular, made everyone feel extra anxious every time they kicked the bucket. 5. You must kill your zombified self to get your gear back. Zombie you. Zombie U, or as it's called outside of the Wii U release, Zombie, is a neat little survival horror game taking place in the midst of an undead apocalypse. Its most praised feature was also its most mischievous though, with players who ended up snacked upon by the undead being faced with a bit of an existential quandary if they want to get their gear back. After dying, you'll respawn as a new survivor with only base equipment, and if you want to regain possession of your prior wares, you'll need to track down your now zombified self and kill them. Though, of course, it's only a game at the end of the day, this was still a creatively eerie way to reinvent a major aspect of the genre, whilst ensuring that players absolutely earned the privilege of retrieving their gear. The feature was very nearly cut amid concerns that it would force the player into too much backtracking, but mercifully, it ultimately made the cut. 4. Exploiting a bug unlocks a secret jump scare – Slender the Arrival no matter how tough or punishing a video game might be, there is always opportunity to cheat or exploit bugs for your own gain, right? Well, the developers of Slender The Arrival came up with a fiendishly clever way to further toy with players who thought they had a leg up on the game itself. Basically, players discovered that the game's third chapter, Into the Abyss, features a bug where the player can move outside the bounds of the map, seemingly free of Slenderman's ability to creep up on them. But after the bug became widely apparent, the game was patched so that anyone who used the exploit would be met with a shock jump scare from Slenderman himself, complete with the mocking text, not even a bug in this game will save you from me, and a prompt game over screen. Just when players thought they could breeze through this section of the game scare-free, Slenderman went and smashed the fourth wall to pieces. Harsh? Perhaps. Incredible? Definitely. 3. Attempting to escape on your own gets you killed. Dead Rising 3 Much like Clock Tower, Dead Rising 3's ending punishes players for acting out of understandable self-interest rather than stopping to think about their friends. At the start of Chapter 7, players are instructed to head to the karaoke bar to meet up with their pals. But if you instead decide to immediately head to the escape plane without them, you'll unlock a hilariously harsh secret ending. In this ending, protagonist Nick will be preparing to embark on a plane ride out of Los Perdidos, citing every man for himself, only to be confronted by friends Annie, Red, Rhonda, and Gary. Nick gets punched in the face and left in the hangar as his four disgusted ex-buddies board the plane and leave without him, all while Nick tries to convince them that he was just joking. To rub salt in the wound, a title card then reveals that Los Perdidos was blown to smithereens with no evidence of survivors. That is quite the overkill death, really, don't you think? 2. Ashley loses her head for investigating the voice. Until Dawn it's said that curiosity killed the cat, and that is also true of Until Dawn's Ashley, God bless, who receives one of the most grotesquely violent deaths in video game history if players can't resist the urge to indulge a classic horror trope. After Ashley is separated from her pals in Chapter 9, players will be given the option of either investigating a screaming voice or rejoining the group. If you investigate the voice, you'll come across a trapdoor from which banging can be heard, and those who decide to open the trapdoor will be met by a wendigo, which promptly rips Ashley's head clean off. Now, I am not saying that opening the trapdoor was a particularly smart move, but did the punishment really fit the crime here, especially someone with such an important and impressive name? It's certainly possible that the voice was one of your friends in trouble, but alas, altruistic naivety ultimately just resulted in one of the game's gnarliest deaths. You really should know better in a horror game by now. 1. Rage Quitters Get Put In The Salt Mines Friday the 13th The Game Though this punishment isn't one of the brutally gory variety, it certainly is harsh regardless. It's become increasingly common in recent years for online multiplayer games to deal with cheaters, griefers, and rage quitters by confining them to their own gameplay lobbies rather than banning them outright. 
and Friday the 13th the game came up with an especially savage way to deal with those who repeatedly bailed out of matches when they were losing and selfishly ruined the experience for everyone else. In 2018, the game was patched to assign an internal salt score to every single player, and players would earn more salt by doing the following. Leaving a match early, leaving whilst being killed, leaving while playing as Jason, and leaving while hosting a match. Get enough salt and you'll end up kicked into the salt mines, a designated area for rage quitters, or as developers Ilphonic themselves put it, where salty players go to play with their equally sodium-soaked peers. Brilliant. And that's our list. Which punishment do you think was just a bit too brutal? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. I've been Ash over on social media at Ash Millman and this has been Rock Culture Gaming. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and come back again soon for some more spine-tingling horror content. Thanks for watching.